topic of today's webinar is hydrogen transportation and storage, specifically how interface fluidics is developing technology to make measuring the physical properties of hydrogen and hydrogen mixtures much easier and much faster so that these projects could be developed and sanctioned much faster. My name is Stuart Kinnair. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Interface Fluidics, and I'll be walking you through this presentation today. First, I want to briefly introduce our company. Interface Fluidics is a technology company based here in Alberta, and uh, Canada, and our goal is to provide unique insights into the interactions and properties of reservoir fluids, or any fluids, to improve the operating efficiencies of our clients and enable better long-term decision-making. Our lab is based at the National Institute for Nanotechnology in Edmonton, Alberta, and our corporate headquarters is in Calgary. At Interface, our work is traditionally focused on how fluids flow through porous media, which means frac fluid optimization, enhanced oil recovery, and steam-assisted gravity drainage, as well as the phase behavior of the oil and gas reservoir fluids that we're typically associated with. When it comes to hydrogen, these are all relevant questions as well, and we'll talk about those today. At Interface, we like to think about what's coming forwards. And today, you can't get away from the discussion about hydrogen and how the world is trying to accelerate those investments. With the market for hydrogen expected to reach $2.5 trillion in the next couple of decades, it's worth investing in the science. And that's really where we're uh, trying to fit into the, the hydrogen space, is that while we understand how to create hydrogen, moving and transporting hydrogen with the impurities that come alongside of it is still very much a challenge. While the world is figure out how to produce hydrogen, the real question is there is still many knowledge gaps around how to transport and store hydrogen, which is something that we're working on the interface. Complex fluid mixtures are a staple of oil and gas exploration. Hydrocarbons are well understood as oil and gas activity spans more than a century, but not hydrogen. Along the hydrogen supply chain, uncertainty emerges when for heating applications, hydrogen is blended for net with natural gas to decarbonize the grid. In geological storage, like in salt caverns, it interacts with the existing chemistry, causing changes in the gas mixture and therefore its properties. And in transportation, impure hydrogen streams interact with various equipment like compressors and pipelines. And we know that production doesn't always create pure hydrogen. Those impurities change the physical properties and designing a resilient transport infrastructure is of critical importance. And we need these measurements. Understanding how impurities impact the transportation infrastructure is of critical importance. We need to understand the sensitivity of various impurities on that stream of hydrogen or more likely methane plus hydrogen stream. How is the equipment like the separators and the compressors going to be impacted? Can we expect any phase changes of impurities like corrosive liquid CO2 or maybe trace amounts of ammonia being transported alongside our hydrogen? And finally, understanding the dew point curve of these different mixtures and the viscosities and densities can allow us to understand how we need to specify these uh, pieces of equipment and this infrastructure. Now, in order to store hydrogen, many different applications are look, being looked at for large scale storage. The salt caverns are one of the most promising for large scale storage, but haven't been implemented at scale. In the cavern, hydrogen can pick up various impurities or even moisture, which could change its physical properties, which are then begs the question, do we have to re-purify the hydrogen after it's been stored, changing the economics significantly? In this section, I'm going to talk a bit about how at Interface, we're developing our technology with a view to being able to bridge these technical gaps using our technology with microfluidics. So the way we're thinking about developing our technology at Interface is that we want to leverage the advantages that microfluidics bring while also listening to the technical people in the industry about what are the measurements that they actually require. And the beauty of microfluidics is that it allows us to combine 
the different tests that are required in the market into one compact unit that allows us to work with small volumes of fluids, which lowers costs and also drastically increases the safety of these systems. Additionally, Interface has a long history of developing measurements for complex fluids, where we've been commercializing uh, these kinds of measurements for the last five to seven years. And while our hydrogen technology is still very much under development, we can take this capability to rapidly develop and deploy new measurements and apply that directly to this market. One conversation that you can't get away from when you're experimenting with hydrogen is safety. Compressed hydrogen is a very dangerous fluid to work with, and that's because it's prone to leakage, has a very low explosive limit, and has high contained energy, in addition to being hard to detect. Thanks to very small volumes that we use at Interface and our the fact that hydrogen can't leak through silicon and glass, which is what our chips are made out of, our testing provides unparalleled safety over other methods. Our devices hold approximately 0.8 microliters of gas at the same pressure as a compressed gas cylinder. That's the contained energy equivalent of lifting an apple just 35 centimeters off the desk. It's not nearly enough energy to cause significant harm. At Interface, we always say that we specialize in extreme condition fluid analysis. We developed proven methods for the study of oil and gas phase behavior over the last five, seven years. And our new viscosity and density measurements are at an advanced stage of development and expect to be commercialized in the next month or two. To date, we've also developed multiple measurements, including a portable lab capable of measuring MMP for carbon capture and utilization and storage. And we also conduct many other measurements on that same bench. Our focus over the last 12 months has been on developing phase behavior studies for complex fluids and performing those studies at extreme condition, up to 15,000 PSI or 1,000 bar, and temperature ranges from 250 Celsius down to below zero. All of these technologies are transferable directly to hydrogen. So I mentioned that we're developed, we've developed a new method for measuring the viscosity and density of gas mixtures. Hydrogen viscosity and densities change with different mixtures. Maybe there's ammonia, methane, water, other kinds of fluids that are present. Different temperatures, operating anywhere from the subsurface onto the pipelines, which, you know, in Alberta might be below minus 20. Different pressure ranges, again, reservoir pressure to pipeline pressure, and being able to predict if phase changes take place. This obviously affects the storage, transportation at the end customer. But the real question is, how do we get this data? Because baseline data on these complex mixtures is required, but really doesn't exist in the literature today. And so interface and our technology is really perfectly suited to developing large data sets very, very quickly. So some questions, you, one question you might answer is how do particles travel through pipelines in various fluids at various viscosities and densities, which is what this uh, image on the right is showing today. Beyond the world of viscosity and density, interface has also developed significant capabilities around the world of phase diagrams. So we've developed this phase diagram here, which was made with uh, a mixture of light hydrocarbons, but again, could be easily transitioned over to measuring phase diagrams for hydrogen and hydrogen mixtures. This, this technology here is actually the full phase diagram in one measurement. That means we put a thousand micro PVT cells onto one microfluidic chip. And on that chip, we're able to see a thousand different pressures and temperatures, getting high resolution data that's never been seen before. So being able to get your full bubble point and dew point curve and quality lines all in one measurement is possible for hydrocarbons and also will be possible for hydrogen. When we're talking about hydrogen production, we can't get away from the question of CO2, especially when we're talking about gray and blue hydrogen. In order to mitigate the externalities from that production, CO2 needs to be sequestered in order to maintain the carbon footprint of the hydrogen. What that means is 
especially now that there's new with the new tax regimes down in the United States, carbon based enhanced oil recovery becomes much more economical. And then understanding how that CO2 interacts with your reservoir fluids is even more important. So in 2020 and 2021, Interface developed the world's highest quality minimum miscibility pressure measurement in partnership with Equinor. And then moving beyond that into injecting CO2 into saline aquifers, for example, looking at uh, foams or other displacement studies for how CO2 interacts with salt water, which you can see on the right. In both cases, understanding how the CO2 that's produced as a byproduct of the hydrogen can be stored and sequestered is of critical importance. In this last section, I just want to wrap up talking a bit about the nuts and the bolts of our technology and how it's going to be applied to hydrogen. The nuts and the bolts truly are, at Interface, we focus on lab on a chip applications, which really is just all about miniaturizing large scale traditional measurement technologies down to the miniature, which provides a whole host of benefits, including the safety that I mentioned before. It also provides visual access. So in the past where you may be strapping a camera to the outside of a PVT cell, like you can see in the picture on the right, we use microscopes and cameras to directly visualize inside these micro channels exactly how these fluids are interacting, which gives us the best possible access and understanding of how fluids behave at the pore scale. I mentioned before that samples are often precious and we use very few uh, or very little of those samples. And then we run all of our experiments at process conditions and confinement, whether that's your reservoir or the pipeline or somewhere in between. At Interface, we really believe that it is important to have a full depth of fluid testing. And so what we've developed is what we're calling Sapphire Lab, which is our deployable microfluidic system. It's complete, we've just finished completing uh, its first deployment with Enhanced Energy here in Alberta, where we were performing some of those minimum miscibility studies that I mentioned a few slides back. The goal there was to understand the sensitivity analysis of how different gases and the impurities contained within them would impact their reservoir fluids. This is the same question that needs to be answered for hydrogen and hydrogen transportation. In that case, we were able to take uh, 20 minimum, mis minimum miscibility pressure measurements in just 20 working days, which is a thousand times faster than any other uh, technology that makes that measurement. And really, we believe that hydrogen is the next thing we'd like to work on. So we're looking for partners to work and bring hydrogen measurement technologies into the future. Just a few closing thoughts. The world is preparing for this onset of a, a new hydrogen age. There are still significant knowledge gaps that can be filled with microfluidics, including those fundamental physical properties of hydrogen and hydrogen mixtures. And our technology brings safety, convenience, speed, lower costs, and finally, smaller volumes. And with that, I uh, would like to thank you for your attendance um, and invite you to submit any questions that you've got to webinar at interfacefluidics.com. Thanks so much.